Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, September 15th, 2020. And today we're going to be talking about the Trump campaign removing ads from Iowa, Ohio, and Nevada. You see, the reason why this is so significant is because on this 2020 electoral map, many states are going to stay the same. But for swing states, President Trump needs to consistently spend ad spending, uh, you know, just spending money on TV ads, internet ads, you know, any type of radio ad that's possible because Trump needs every single thing backing him as he enters into this election. Unfortunately for him, he's in what the, uh, you know, Bloomberg media likes to call a cash crunch. Essentially, Trump is broke and he's running out of money. And the Biden campaign, like the Hillary Clinton campaign did four years ago, is severely out fundraising Donald Trump. In the last quarter, the Biden campaign reported $365 million. That is super significant. This election might be one of the more expensive elections in history, if not the most expensive by the time we reach November. Now, if we're looking at the overall you know, national electoral map, Donald Trump still retains a number of states. But the fact that he's removed ads from a certain uh, you know, important region the entire Rust Belt um, is is a very big warning sign for the Trump campaign because what we see is from medium buying they pretty much track uh, you know ad spending from different campaigns just because they do tend to you know work with campaigns in order to send out TV ads so they're tracking them consistently. They reported actually yesterday that the Trump campaign has removed ads for this upcoming week in a number of states, including Iowa, Ohio, and Nevada. You see the reason why that's so significant is because I've made a video about this before. I talked about how. Trump Trump removed ads from Michigan. I talked about in another video how Trump removed ads from Pennsylvania. And then another video where I talk about how Trump removed ads from Arizona. Well, now what we see is in addition to Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, the Trump campaign is now removing ads for this week in Iowa, in Ohio, and Nevada which puts Joe Biden at a very good position to swoop in and send in a lot of money into these states and end up coming out on Election Day. And the reason why coming out victorious on Election Day and the reason why I think that Trump really needs to focus on a lot of this ad spending is because a number of these states on this, you know, gray and blue map have early voting, meaning people can cast their ballots way earlier than in a normal election uh, or than voting on Election Day. In Arizona, actually, 75 percent of the ballots were cast ahead of time, whether that was through mail-in voting or whether that was through early voting 75 percent before election day which means trump needs all the time right now in order to convince these voters to end up voting for him and arizona doesn't look like it's going to be too easy for trump to win but the fact that iowa ohio two states that trump won by nine percent in ohio by nearly ten percent in uh you know actually eight percent in ohio nine percent in iowa both of them nearly double digits um this is super significant because the Trump campaign cannot be, you know, at this point out of money. They cannot afford to be within the final 50 days of the campaign to be at a point where Trump is, you know, consistently under fundraising Joe Biden. And, you know, Trump is a billionaire. He has said that he could put $100 million of, you know, his own money into the campaign, which honestly wouldn't be the worst thing for him to do. But the fact is that the campaign seems to be in a cash crunch. They, they seem to be out of money. And what we've seen is that not only are they withdrawing ads in states that are going to be crucial if they are to win re-election, it's just so many things piling up on the Trump campaign right now. And it looks like it may end up being to a point at a point on Election Day where Trump may not even be spending any money on TV ads and may focus completely on the Internet. Because if we're taking a look at this Bloomberg ad, if we're talking about where Trump has, you know, outspent Biden, there's only one state where Biden has been outspent by Trump, and that is the state of Georgia. And this is actually a state that, you know, was 16 electoral votes for Trump in 2016 by nearly 6%. It was a likely state that should be going to the GOP. Absolutely. But now, you know, Biden is super competitive. Let's take a look at where Georgia stands today. It's a 1.7% margin for Trump. Four years ago, he won it by 5%. So if Georgia is considered 1.7% in a lead for Donald Trump, he needed to play defense. He withdrew ad spending out of Minnesota and a number of other Democratic states from 2016 because he needed to play offense, uh, sorry, defense. And he absolutely needed to focus on Texas, needed to focus on Georgia, Ohio, and Iowa. And actually, when I covered my Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona videos, I talked about this. I mean, the Trump campaign was redirecting funds away from Michigan and Pennsylvania and Arizona to Iowa and Ohio. Well, guess what now? They're out of the money they redirected. See, the problem for the Trump campaign is they're not doing nearly as well in terms of Biden as spending. In Wisconsin, Biden spent $9.2 million to Trump's $1.5 million. Wisconsin was the only state that Trump outspent Hillary Clinton in in 2016. 
In Florida, Biden spent $23 million. Trump spent six. In Arizona, Biden spent $10 million. Trump spent 1.4. In North Carolina, Biden spent 11.5 million to Trump's 3.7 million. This is super significant. The gaps are insanely different. In terms of cable ads, $97.7 million between August 10th and September 7th for the Biden campaign, whereas Trump only spent roughly a fourth of that, $21.6 million. $21.6 million versus $97.7 million. And guess what? There isn't only one billionaire in this race. Michael Bloomberg is spending $100 million solely on the state of Florida which means while Florida may be close right now, we could see Biden return to numbers that he enjoyed a couple of months ago, being up at one point by 8% on the 538 average in Florida. His numbers have dwindled, Trump's numbers have gone up, but we're going to see a lot more spending in this state for the Democratic Party. And Trump is going to need a lot more than $100 to overcome this $80 million deficit that he's already at at this point. And if we're looking at where you know the money needs to be spent, Iowa, Ohio, and Nevada. I think the Trump campaign has always wanted to target Nevada because it was close in 2016. And because there's all these reports talking about how Biden doesn't have as strong of a lead amongst Hispanic voters as he did four years, as Hillary Clinton had four years ago. But Trump has not really improved amongst Latino voters. Um, all we've seen so far is that he's marginally improved by one, two percent, minimal. In terms of the loss for Biden, though, we're seeing a pretty a little bit more significant loss, but overall, these are just coming out of undecided voters and people who said they aren't voting, which is why you really shouldn't be comparing it to exit polling. But again, that's a video uh, for a whole nother day. But if we're looking at this map, it's very hard for you to see how Donald Trump can win the election if he's not spending money in the final 50 days of the campaign. And I get it. It was just it's just one week, right? I know I'm going to see a comment. Oh, it's just one week that he's not spending in Iowa, Ohio and Nevada. That's seven days out of 50. That's a pretty significant portion. And he hasn't spent money in a number of these states. He has not dropped an ad, you know, in a number of these battleground states since Labor Day, since we were talking about a week ago. So the weeks are going to start to add up. And if Trump's campaign does not get more money very quickly, you know, he could end up not spending any more TV ad spending on air in Iowa, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or Arizona. And what the Trump campaign has said is that they will return to these states in October when, you know, supposedly in-person voting or early voting is supposed to begin in a number of these states. But when the mail-in ballots are already being sent in in North Carolina, when the mail-in ballots are already being sent in in a number of states, and when people are getting ready to vote early, and all they're seeing is Biden ads, and they're being reached out to by the Biden campaign, and a number of things are happening for them you know, from the Biden campaign, and Trump takes 14% of this time and says, don't spend ads. We need to save the money. Well, where is this money going to go to? Because you dropped ads in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Arizona to redirect on a defense strategy. I get it. That makes sense. You didn't have to carry all of those states together in order to win the election. Trump could have easily lost two of the three swing states in the Rust Belt and still won the election. But if he's not playing offense in the right states, you know, Iowa, Ohio, these are to combine 24 electoral votes. And mind you, these are states that the Democratic Party was not targeting for this election. Absolutely not. These are two states that the Republican Party carried in 2016 by nearly 10 percent. These were not necessarily on the competitive swing state radar. But the fact is, Donald Trump is dropping ads not only here, but across the country. And if he does say, you know, I'm going to return to these states or the Trump campaign says we will return to these states in October. If a significant portion of the electorate has already cast their ballots, you can see why that's bad news, because Trump did very well leading up until Election Day. But the thing about a mail-in election is that people have all the time in the world to cast their ballot, but they're going to do it early because of these warnings about the U.S. Postal Service. They will get this sent in way before Trump can even drop an ad in Arizona. And I'm sure there are so many voters right now that have already made up their minds that even if Trump was to, you know, have an ad spending blitz in the final week of the campaign, it wouldn't really matter because the reality is Republicans are going to be the ones voting in person on Election Day, which is exactly why we might see a red mirage uh, on Election Night. And then a week later, Trump could uh, end up losing the election. But what we're looking at now is that Trump needs all of this time now more than ever to spend money. And he's not doing it you know, too elegantly at all. And we're looking at where Biden is outspending him. It's super significant. I mean, super, super significant. And he's only really spending, Trump is only really spending a lot of this money on internet ad spending or national ads. He rarely ever runs local ads. Let me get to the part of the um, article right here. If we're looking, right, um, this is what the Bloomberg article considered to be locking in airtime. Um, when we're talking about Trump, 
I made the video talking about how he, you know, withdrew ads from Arizona for one week, right? He withdrew ads from Pennsylvania for a week where he, you know, wasn't going to run anything leading up to Labor Day. And now since it has been Labor Day, they haven't had any of these local ads. All of these ads that we've seen in these states are national ads, ones that are sent out on news companies, ones that aren't made specifically for I'm an Iowa voter. This is why I'm voting for Trump. This is why I'm voting for, you know, the Republican Party in general. And it's not only there. It's Arizona. It's Nevada. It's New Hampshire and Pennsylvania. Now, Nevada and New Hampshire never really made sense for me. Trump just needs to play defense in order to win the election. Playing offense is probably not going to help him too much unless he's looking for an electoral college landslide. Knowing the president, he probably is. But at the same time, it's not realistic this late in the game. Now, if we're looking at Arizona, we're looking at Iowa, we're looking at Pennsylvania. These are states that Trump won in 2016. He won Iowa. He won Arizona. He won Pennsylvania. Sure, if he plays defense and we characterize all the remaining states on how they're expected to vote, you know, it does look a little bit better for Trump, um, just considering that, um, you know, if we apply the 2016 numbers, like I said, playing defense could be the best thing that he could do. He could technically win, but he's down in Arizona. I mean, he's down in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. He's up in Ohio, which is, you know, pretty significant. But if Biden has... 14% of the time period where Trump is going to be spending absolutely no money in terms of TV ads, where a lot of, you know, the conservative media does get a lot of the sources from both the radio and TV ad spending, you know, Iowa and Ohio could end up being lean for Joe Biden following this week, because it's not just this week, because I've made a video about this two weeks ago. I made a video about Michigan three weeks ago. It's not just one week. These weeks add up. And as we get closer and closer to the election, we're a month and a half away, roughly a month and a half from now, we will have a general idea of who the president of the United States will be in January 2021. And unfortunately for Trump, he needs all of this time to spend money. And I honestly don't think that it's just he chooses not to spend the money here and that they're waiting for an October surprise. Honestly, it just seems as if the Trump campaign is out of money, which is exactly why Donald Trump has floated the idea of sending in his own money. The exact reason why the Trump campaign has said, we'll come back in October. We have money expected to be spent in October. We have money expected to return in Michigan in September. What did we see? Maybe $7 million spent. I mean, it was outlined in the Bloomberg ad. We didn't see too much happening in Michigan. We didn't see too much happening in Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. What we saw from the Biden campaign is that not only are they outperforming Trump in terms of fundraising, they're spending that money in key battleground states. Because the thing for the Biden campaign, they really don't need to play defense because Hillary Clinton didn't win the election. They can afford to lose maybe Nevada or New Hampshire, but realistically, they're going to make up for it with a Rust Belt victory, with a Florida victory, with a North Carolina victory. So all of these things, you know, the Biden campaign is going to end up coming out on top if this race stays the same. And unfortunately for Donald Trump, while he may be in for a cash crunch, this is not going to be, you know, here's some of my money from the Biden campaign, right? So overall, Donald Trump seems to be at a very bad position in terms of where his money is being spent, in terms of, you know, the money that has already been spent. He spent, I believe, upwards of a billion dollars, you know, seeing some time around that figure. And he's still down in a number of these battleground states. He's still down on the national average by 7%. He's still down in the overall percent chance of victory, 75 to 25. So if we're looking at all of these numbers, it doesn't seem like the ad spending did too much for Trump in order to win the election. Um, but we do have 49 days to go and things definitely could change. But Trump is going to need a huge surge of money if he wants to even come close at matching you know, Biden's fundraising efforts right now. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. I just posted on there actually a 2020 electoral map based off the polls. If you want to go ahead and check that out, it's an updated one for September. Um, in the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. We're almost to 600 members. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all later today.